Okay, this is the second part of our open source digital signage series that focuses on Pi signage. So we're going through the different open source platforms that provide uh, digital signage servers and players. Um, and like I said, in this one, we're looking at, at the Pi signage application. Uh, just a super quick refresher, um, the Pi signage uh, installation includes a um, server, a signage server that we installed in part one on our Ubuntu server over DigitalOcean. And to that server, you can connect players um, and those players render uh, the content on the screen. In this case, we're focusing uh, exclusively on using smart TVs as our displays uh, for retail locations, hotel lobbies, bars, restaurants, retail stores, you name it. And in this particular scenario, we're looking at using the Raspberry Pi to power our player, okay? So in the first video, or the first part of this series, we looked at installing the server up on our Ubuntu server over at DigitalOcean. In this second part, we are going to configure our Raspberry Pi 4 to function as our player and connect that player to our server so that we can actually start to use this closed system to power our um, public facing smart TV signage displays, okay? So this part two is, is actually, I think, much easier than the first part and, and nowhere near as time consuming. So this should go pretty quickly. Uh, just remember that uh, in the description below, there's links if you wanna follow through either um, with uh, uh, you know, our, our step-by-step if you know this is going to go pretty fast so um, if you'd like check out the comments below and you'll find links to uh, additional information and resources that can kind of help you through this okay so let's go ahead and get started here we're talking about configuring the the raspberry pi player software and connecting it to our server and to do that you're going to need um, obviously a raspberry pi you're going to need wi-fi and you're going to need a, a smart tv for, for, for part two of this, we used a, a Kana kit Raspberry Pi, and it was the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, but I believe that uh, you can use, you know, if you're using Raspberry Pi 3, or um, I, we haven't tested it on anything else but Raspberry Pi 4, but I do believe that for the most part, you should be able to follow along with this. If you know otherwise, please comment up and, and let us and other people know so uh, they don't waste time or energy. Um, but for this, for the purposes of this, we used a Raspberry Pi, excuse me, Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, okay? Um, and uh, really that you need the, the kit and everything that's included in it, which is the Raspberry Pi, you're gonna need power, you're gonna need an SD cord, and you're gonna need a mic micro HDMI cable. Obviously you're gonna need some sort of internet access and a smart TV. And, and those are uh, the requirements. And, and basically in, in part one, we went through all of this setup. So if you're if you, you're not familiar with configuring your Raspberry Pi or setting it up, initial setup, uh, go back and the link to part one is below, but basically you need to be able to uh, connect the Raspberry Pi um, to your smart TV with the micro HDMI cable. You need to be able to power it up. Um, you're going to need to be able to use a keyboard um, and um, connect it to a LAN or Wi-Fi. And uh, with that, with the Raspberry Pi set up and connected to the TV successfully, we can kind of jump into step one, which is um, preparing the Raspberry, excuse me, not preparing the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is already set up. It's, it's getting the, the uh, player software files from GitHub, getting them onto an SD card, mounting them, and flashing them, and then getting that SD card into your Raspberry Pi and the signage player software running from the Raspberry Pi. That's step one. And then in step two, we will head over to um, configuring our Raspberry Pi initial configuration and initial setup so that it talks to our server and connects to our server and we can start to control the TV screen from our uh, remote server. So let's get started with step one. Um, in terms of the requirements, one of the things we said is that you're going to need a, an SD card. Uh, the Pi signage uh, uh, requirements are that it's a class 10, at least 8 gig uh, micro SD card. I think in this one we used a 16 gig and it was just fine, but the authors uh, suggest a minimum of 8 gigs. 
And in order to be able to get the, the files mounted onto the SD card, uh, we use something called etcher.io. There are a number of different ways you can do this. We're actually new to etcher.io. Um, and we watched some videos ourselves. Etcher.io just seemed to work uh, easily and uh, it downloaded fast. And so we, we actually went ahead and used it. And I'm, and I'm glad we were introduced to it. It seems to work really well. So um, you can head over to etcher.io and you can download that for your system, whether you're using a PC or a Mac. Okay, so now we've uh, we've got an SD card. We've got our etcher.io installed in our system. Um, we can go ahead and get the uh, Raspberry Pi signage player software, and uh, I'll provide the link below. We've got we we did a, um, a a clone of the authors repository, and we'll provide the author's repository and our repository below. Um, either one will work, it doesn't matter, but this is where you can go and get the files to download from GitHub. And there is a video tutorial that goes along with this and a lot more detail, like I said, in the full-blown tutorial. But the process to Flash is really, really simple using etcher.io. Basically, you insert the SD card um, into your computer. Etcher.io will prompt you to um, select which drive you want to flash the files to. It'll ask you to select a source for the files. And then basically you hit flash and took about, I would say about two minutes to go through the process. But all in all, it's really easy. We have a video on that specific part of it if you'd like to check it out um, again in the full tutorial. So the next step is once the, once the flash card, excuse me, once the SD card has been mounted with the uh, player files, um, you re remove the card from your computer and insert it into the Raspberry Pi and boot it up. And once you do that, when you power up, you'll notice that your, your TV screen reflects the welcome message, the, ra the default Raspberry Pi me welcome message. And this welcome message contains some pretty important information. Um, it com contains the uh, player ID for that Raspberry Pi. Um, and it also gives uh, 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 an IP address from which you can manage the player configurations locally if it's on the same network, okay? So in this case, you can see we've got a player ID of, you know, 100000 AFC7. And then also it tells us that um, on our local network, our local area network, go to basically localhost, if you're familiar with that, and then port 8000. And that's going to get you into... Um, a, a, a user interface or a control panel where you can control your Raspberry Pi player um, right from a browser that's on the same network. So that's really all that's involved in, in step one is, you know, get your SD card, um, download Etcher or some other program to be able to mount the files, get the files from GitHub, and uh, go ahead and flash or mount the SD card, get the SD card into the Raspberry Pi, and power it up and your screen is going to uh, prompt you uh, with information you're going to need to jump into step two, which is what we're going to do right now. So now that we've got the, 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 um, the player files installed into our Raspberry Pi and our Raspberry Pi booted up and connect, connected to the TV and powered on, um, the next step is to go ahead and get a, a, a license file from the Pi signage folks. Um, and take that license file over to our server that we did in part one and go ahead and connect our Raspberry Pi to our server. Now, by default, when you power this up for the first time, it's going to connect to PySignage.com and it's going to look for your account on PySignage.com. And if you wanted to stop right there, you actually could. You could run this from PySignage.com. Um, technically, at that point, you, you've got an installation that'll work. But the whole point of this is creating... A, a closed system um, with the server software sitting on our own servers. And the reason for that is because we've got a lot of plans to um, add a whole lot of functionality and abstraction. Um, so we went ahead and, and, and built this out on our own server. And that's really what this tutorial is about, is if you guys want to do the same thing. Um, but just so you know, at this stage, once you powered up that Pi and you've got the, the player ID, technically you're you're set there. We're just going this extra step further. So let's go ahead and dive in and do this. Um, in order to be able to 
uh, register, we, first of all, we have to register the player. And you can do that. You go over to PySignage.com. These screenshots are a little bit small. Just remember in the full tutorial, you can see um, the, the, the full screenshots and um, a, a lot more detail. But you just go over to PySignage.com and you'll see once you log in an option to register a player. When you click on register a player, you'll get this pop-up window and it asks you the type of license. Now this is pretty important. Um, the, the second option down here is to, uh, is to register for a player license only. And when you're hosting your own version of this on your own server, that's the license that you want to get. We actually made this mistake a couple times and, you know, we're kind of scratching our heads what we did wrong and then come back here and realize that we, we picked the wrong license type. Um, it's right in front of us, but we missed it. So don't make the same mistake we did. If you're, if you're, if you're using your own installed version of PySignage on server on your own Ubuntu installation, then you're going to want to pick this option here, um, which is uh, license only. Okay, so you're going to select that, and then in the box right below, you're going to take your uh, player ID that's present on the TV and type it in there. You can go ahead and configure these, but we'll do this in the third video. Uh, but right now, all you really need to do in this section here where it says enter the 16 digit player ID is literally copy it from the TV screen and uh, type it in there and hit register. And once you register, you're going to go down to subscriptions and licenses. Again, we're in PySignage.com and are logged in into our account. And PySignage gives two free licenses that, to the best of our knowledge, are fully functional licenses. Um, and when you register the player, what's going to happen is one of your two licenses is going to get sequestered uh, for that player. And what you'll see here is uh, uh, the, the license that was sequestered, there'll, there'll be a one here, and you're just going to click on view that license. And when you click on view, you'll get another pop-up window that's got your license. It's a .txt file, and you can just hit download or this blue download icon here, and the license will be downloaded to your machine. So in this case, um, it, I know it's hard to see here, but it's a license underscore. And then this string of numbers is the same numbers that are on our TV. So the license number matches the um, player ID and it's a .txt file. So once you've got your license file from PySignage, we need to go over to our own installation, our own Ubuntu installation that we did in part one log in and we need to upload that license to our server. So basically whatever your IP address in this case, um, um, you know, we, we haven't assigned a domain or excuse me, a domain name or anything to this. We just kept our IP address and it's opened it up on port 3000. So you can see barely here, um, our IP address and then port uh, 3000 and we logged in and this is just the default, um, you know, landing page or home screen. What we did is we hit settings, and when you go to settings, you'll see an option to upload and available licenses. When you do it, you probably, this will be blank. There'll be nothing here, but when you click upload, it'll uh, provide with an upload window. And uh, we uploaded the, the license file that we just downloaded from PySignage. And that's literally it. We've got our license now um, up in our own cloud, and we're ready to go back to our Raspberry Pi player and uh, connect the player to our own server. So like I said, by default, when you power it up for the first time, once you flash the card, it's going to default and connect to PySignage.com. That's okay. But what we need to do now that we've got our license up on our own server is go and tell the player in the Raspberry Pi, hey, stop looking at PySignage.com for the content. It's not going to be there. You need to look over at, at, at a different server. And um, we do that with the web UI that comes out of the box with, uh, with the Pi signage application. And generally, if, you're, you know, you're, if your computer is on the same network as, as your Pi signage, um, it'll, it'll just be localhost and then port 8000. And when you enter that, um, um, it's going to bring you into the uh, configuration UI, almost like a little control panel for your Raspberry Pi player. Um, I don't believe I have to log in or anything. You basically just go to your local host and, and port 8000 and click on the settings icon. And then once you hit on settings, you'll be in the, in the, in the settings uh, configuration page. Scroll down about mid page, you'll see a, a change server option. 
Again, it's going to say by default pi signage here. Literally delete that and enter in your server's IP address and then the port, ideally, or not ideally, but ours was port 3000. If you followed our part one tutorial, yours will probably be port 3002 with a different IP address, obviously. But um, so just literally paste in our IP address and port 3000. This may or may not be important, but we noticed that, you know, we just got rid of the HTTPS and any kind of trailing backslashes or anything and just put the IP address, colon, and, and port. And when you hit change, what you're going to see, and you can see this in the videos, um, the, the screen is going to uh, go dark as it reboots, and it's going to come back up with uh, content that you've got on your own PySignage server. It's going to start to display your content, and that's it. You're hooked up. So... I know we went through this really, really fast. Um, hopefully, it's helpful. If you, you're probably going to want, if it's your, if you're not too familiar with this stuff, definitely check out the link, and you can go through this at a much slower pace and with a lot more detail. Um, and that link is in the description below. Um, and really, with with this step done, we've got our own um, our fully controllable um, digital signage server and player that we can start to configure. And now we can start to do some really cool stuff. I mean, really the fun begins here now. So at this point, we'll cut this off. The links to more detailed information are below. And then coming up next in the in the third segment of our PySignage installation and deployment series, um, we're gonna look at some configuring the content, setting up schedules, um, that sort of thing. And then uh, as well as how we're going to be providing extensions and creating some really cool new experiences that you can do in retail locations and bars and restaurants that really engage customers and um, um, people on location in, in just some really cool and exciting new ways. So if that's of interest to you, stick around, subscribe, whatever, um, because we'll, be, we'll start to be showing you how we're um, abstracting and extending these open source players, including PySignage. Hopefully this helped a little bit. If you have any questions, comments, run into any bumps in the road, leave a comment. We'll check it out and we'll try and help you out the best we can. Um, and likewise, if you have more server side development experience that we do or more experience with uh, open source signage players, by all means, if you found a bug or something wonky in here, comment it up. Um, we're here to share and learn. So thank you very much and good luck uh, with your installation. Let us know how it goes.